All right, we have a tougher combustion analysis question here. Six grams of a compound that contains carbon and hydrogen and oxygen is combusted, and it gives 14.2 grams of carbon dioxide and 7.29 grams of water. We want its empirical formula. Now, if you know anything about combustion analysis, you know that this number will give the number of moles of carbon, and this will give the number of moles of hydrogen. What we don't know is the number of moles of oxygen, but we can find that too because we were given the original mass. Let's do this together. The number of moles of carbon is the same as the number of moles of carbon dioxide because there's only one carbon atom in each carbon dioxide. So to figure out that number of moles, it's 14.2 grams, the mass, divided by the molar mass of carbon dioxide. 44.01 grams per mole. That's 14.2 divided by 44.01. That's 0 0.3227 moles of carbon dioxide. And again, because there's only one carbon in each carbon dioxide, it's the same number of moles for just carbon. How about for hydrogen? Well, we have 7.29 grams of water and water itself weighs or has a molar mass of 18.02 grams per mole. That's this many moles of water. But because we have two hydrogens per water, we need to double that in order to get the number of moles of hydrogen. So what I have is 0 0.8091 moles of hydrogen. What we need now is the number of moles of oxygen because an empirical formula is based off the relative ratios of all the atoms with each other. This is where the magic comes in. This many moles of carbon weighs how much? Well, the mass is equal to the number of moles, 0 0.3227, times the molar mass of just carbon because again, we're only caring about just carbon here. This is in grams per mole. I guess I forgot that here. So 0.3227 divided, oh damn, times 12.01 means that that many moles of carbon has a mass of 3.876 grams. We can do the same for hydrogen. 0.8091 moles of hydrogen times the molar mass of hydrogen will give me the mass that that number of moles weighs. 0 0.8091 times 1.01 .01 gives me 0 0.8172 grams. Thus, the mass of carbon is this, the mass of hydrogen is this, and the mass of oxygen in the original compound is the six gram sample that we started with minus all the carbon minus all the hydrogen. The remaining mass had to have come from the other oxygen in the molecule that we weren't told anything about. Six minus 3.876 minus 0.8172 gives me a mass of oxygen of 1.307. We can get the number of moles of oxygen that that's worth with mass over molar mass. That's 1.307 grams of oxygen divided by the molar mass of oxygen, which is 16. That's 0 0.08168 moles. Sweet. So now I have the relative molar ratios of all my atoms. Let's recap. 0 0.3227 moles of carbon, 0 0.8091 moles of hydrogen and 
zero point zero eight one six eight moles of oxygen. Didn't plan that out very well. If only I could find the relative molar ratios of these. I can. My secret for finding the relative molar ratios for the empirical formula is to divide all of these by whichever one's smallest. Looks like my smallest number is this one. So I'm going to divide this by 0 0.08168, divide this by 0 0.08168, and divide this by 0 0.08168. The reason we divide by the smallest one is because it will make the atom that has the smallest number of atoms in that molecule a ratio of one. That divided by itself is going to be one. Now let's watch the magic happen here. For every one oxygen, I get 0 0.8091 divided by 0 0.08168. 9.9, .9, or rather, about 10 hydrogens. And the number of carbons is 0 0.3227 divided by 0 0.08168, 3.95, which is about 4. If I had gotten a 0.5 somewhere, I simply would have doubled them all to make them all whole numbers. Thus, my empirical formula is 4 carbons to 10 hydrogens to 1 oxygen. And this is it. Now, I don't know if this is the official formula of the molecule. This is the empirical formula. It's the lowest whole number ratio. It could be C8H20O2, for all I know. But this is the actual ratio. Maybe it's butanol. Or something like that. Who knows? I don't because I wasn't given enough data. But yeah, so that's how you find the empirical formula when you're only given the mass of carbon dioxide and water in the combustion of a compound that contains carbon and hydrogen and oxygen. You find the number of moles of carbon and hydrogen like before, find the masses that they account for, and the remaining mass is the mass of oxygen. That gives you your last number of moles, and you can figure out the empirical formula from there. Who's a boss? You and me are both bosses is the answer. Hey, best of luck.